Hi everyone and welcome to In Deep Geek Live. Uh, I am delighted uh, to introduce my guest today uh, who is not only an extremely talented writer but also an extremely talented uh, artist uh, and if you have watched any of my Westworld live streams and I'm sure you will uh, know how much value she adds to uh, to the live streams as well. Uh, one of my favorite people in the community, Vanessa Cole, do you want to say hi? Hi, everybody. Um, if you have seen the Westworld episodes, obviously, you know who I am. But if not, um, I just wanted to introduce myself. I write for Watchers on the Wall, um, obviously covering Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire. I um, also write for Westworld Watchers. And um, as Robert mentioned, I am an artist as well. So you can always check out my stuff um, on Twitter. I post quite a bit there, and it's uh, at VK Cole Artist. Um, but uh, just to give you a little bit of background as far as Game of Thrones and Song of Ice and Fire is concerned, I started reading the books first uh, back in 2011, right when A Dance of Dragons came out. Um, binged them in two weeks. Then I binged the first season of the show. I've read the novels, I think, about five times since then. And I think I've seen this show um, on my fourth watch. So uh, I'm a little obsessed, to say the least. <laughs> Excellent, as as we all are, and I've I've got already one of my favourite super chats ever from from Stephen Stark. Thank you so much. You just <laughs> said I just need to hear you say Vanessa rocks, and she does, and I'm very delighted to uh, uh, to say that uh, Vanessa is uh, is an, an excellent member of this community, and uh, and as a, well, I've already bigged her up. But there are links to her things down in the description below, so uh, uh, do go and have a look at that. The um, thank you, Stephen. Sorry, I just had to say. Hi, Stephen. He um, at the first Con of Thrones back in Nashville. He was on our trivia team. So, hi, Stephen. It's good to see you. <laughs> uh, did you win? No, unfortunately. I think we were robbed. To be honest, <laughs> we, we came really close. I think we we did really well. Excellent. Well, I would I would be intrigued to know who won the Game of Thrones trivia thing. Um, I think uh, it was maybe... Aziz's team. I think it was Aziz. Aziz, I think it was his team that won, if I Aziz, remember correctly. Of course, was on last week here because I yeah. only have the best <laughs> people on this channel. Um, okay, so uh, the the topic today, guys, uh, you've probably seen it already. We're going to be talking about one of the things that every single time I've done a live stream for on Game of Thrones for about the last couple of months, somebody has mentioned this. So I thought, you know what? Let's just tackle it. Let's just go headfirst into it. The question is, will Will Daenerys have a baby? Are John and Danny going to have a, a little baby Targaryen? What does this mean? Can Danny even have children anymore? So that's the whole thing we're going to be covering. As always, uh, just throw your questions down there in the chat. We'll get to as many of them as we possibly can. Super Chats we'll get to uh, uh, straight away, of course. Um, uh, but first of all, uh, I'm just going to like start out with the, the the fundamental question here, which is something that's been hanging over Danny for a long time. She doesn't think that she can have children. Uh, Vanessa, do you think that she can have children? I do. Um, and you know, if you go by the books, her last chapter in A Dance with Dragons. Um, kind of alludes to the fact that she may have had a miscarriage, actually, um, when she says she can't remember the last time she had her period, and then she eats these berries that cause her to get really sick, and then she starts bleeding pretty heavily. Um, so to me, that seems like it's pretty good evidence that she actually was pregnant and, you know, caused herself to have a miscarriage out there on the Dothraki Sea. So I think it's possible whether or not she could actually carry one to term is another question. Um, but, you know, I think the fact that she talks about it so frequently, especially in the last season of the show, I mean, it's pretty much <laughs> really blatant foreshadowing that, yeah, okay, you know, I say that I can't, so obviously it is going to happen. Um, but yeah, as far as the ramifications, we'll, we'll get into that. But I, I definitely think it's possible. Um, and it, what's funny to me, though, is in the show, you know, she mentions that the witch told her she couldn't have children. And she doesn't even say that line in the show. If you go back and watch season one, she omits that part completely. Um, so it's I don't know if it was just an oversight or what, but she doesn't even tell her, you know, that part, that portion of her prophecy or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, so let's get it. Let's get it. <laughs> 
tackle that prophecy curse, whatever you want to call it, right now. Because as you shown, I think it was quite important they didn't do that line on the show. It's like one of those things, like the Velencar prophecy. They didn't include that bit on the show either. So it's 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 possible that's a hint that they didn't want to confuse the audience. But um, I I did I, I wrote it out beforehand just because I thought it'd be useful for us to hear it. And the context here is that. Uh, Carl Drogo at the time, Danny's love of her life is there and he's in this kind of like uh, slightly comatose or vegetative state and she says, when's he coming back? And her response is, when the sun rises in the west and sets in the east, when the seas go dry and mountains blow in the wind like leaves, when your womb quickens again and you bear a living child, then he will return and not before. So this was... Uh, she was asking, when is Carl Drogo going to be back to who he is? And basically this curse or prophecy, whatever it is, is a series of things that will not happen. So things like the sun rising in the west will not happen. The seas going dry will not happen. When your womb quickens again and you bear a living child, the implication is that Mary Mazda is saying that will not happen. So it's not actually a specific curse about her bearing children it's a sort of a an offhand comment as part of a curse about Carl Drogo or a uh, uh, not even a curse as a kind of a uh, telling her that you know that's not going to happen but but what do you make Vanessa of this is is it a is it a curse is it is it was she casting some sort of spell because in the book certainly there's this long period where she appears not to have any periods, not to right. not to be able to bear children. Was was there some magic going on there? Um, it, possibly. Um, I think she was just basically saying because of the traumatic stillbirth that she had. Um, possibly there was some damage done, and so f from Mary's experience, I mean, she did have a medical background, so she may have assumed that that wouldn't be possible, and was just saying, hey. Yeah, he's never coming back. <laughs> Here's just, you know, she's basically saying when hell freezes over with those those lines. And that may have been what she meant. Um, but I know a lot of people have really, <laughs> of course, we never over overanalyze things in this fandom, but <laughs> a lot of people have taken those lines and pointed to textual evidence that some of these things are actually happening now. So, you know, like Quentin Martel going to Marine, he's coming from the West and his sigil is the sun. So he's rising in the West and setting in the East because he dies, unless you're one of those conspiracy theorists that thinks he's still alive somehow. Um, so that's, you know, setting in the East. And then this, the Dothraki Sea, the grasses are drying up and dying. The seas go dry, the mountains blowing in the wind like leaves could be the pyramids of marine that are um, crumbling because the dragons have kind of destroyed them once they've gotten loose. Um, so, you know, it, it could be either one. And I, I love how George R. R. Martin really leaves things open-ended, even with his prophecies. Um, you almost never see a literal, um, not an interpretation, but a literal, um, what's the word I'm looking for? A literal result from a prophecy. It doesn't ever happen or almost never happens literally. It's always done in a figurative way or a metaphorical way. So um, I like how he's leaving it kind of open-ended. You can take it as, yeah, it's just her way of saying it's never going to happen. Or, you know, you could read into it and see like, oh, maybe these things are signs that she will be able to bear a living child at some point. Um, now, as for what that means as far as Drogo coming back, because obviously I don't think any of us think he's like he's going to return. He was burned to death. I mean, not burned to death, but, you know, he was cremated, basically. So, you know, we, we can get into that in a little bit. But um, I definitely think, you know, it's possible. And if you take it as some kind of prophecy, um, I think there are signs that point to it um, actually being able to be true. Yeah, I would agree with all of that. So the the point of what Miri Mazda there was doing and saying was not about whether Danny can have children. This was about whether or not Carl Drogo is coming back. And the answer to that is no, he's never coming back. Now, the 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 bit that she dropped in about whether or not uh, she's going to be able to bear a living child 
is 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 an interesting one because if we treat it like prophecy, as you're saying, George R. R. Martin doesn't want us to be able to have this kind of very clear line between prophecy and outcome. He doesn't want us to be able to say, okay, the prophecy was, and you were going to have a child in five years' time, and then you're going to call it whatever, and then lo and behold, that happened. That's not how he likes it to be. How he likes these things to be is open to interpretation and even after the event i think being able to look back and say oh did that mean that so i saw a couple of people in the chat uh bringing out the the quentin martell uh point i think that's an entirely valid point uh, that metaphorically maybe that you could argue that all of that has been fulfilled but at the same time you could just argue this was just her Mary Mazda spitting curses with no magic behind them and it actually doesn't matter and she was just like trying to be nasty uh, it's I so the upshot of all of that I think is that that was not a curse that says that she cannot bear a child I think that it, she could theoretically, it's just that over that period of time, certainly in the books and it would appear in the show, she couldn't for various reasons. And then, as you say, in the books at the very end of the last book that we have, A Dance with Dragons, she does seem to have either a miscarriage or, or the, the return of a period or something like that happened. There was definitely lots of blood going on. There was, she wasn't in her right mind that she did eat some berries that seem quite, let's say, hallucinogenic. So we don't know exactly what was going on there. But certainly the implication is that she, uh, she might now be able to have children. Um, but we had a, a, a super chat. Just want to quickly go over there. Klaus Richter. Hi, one of my uh, um, patrons. Klaus, great to, uh, uh, to see you at 10 euros. Um, if Daenerys can have children, it will probably take nine months. Will this period be covered in the next season? Now, I think that's an excellent point. I was going to come to that later, but but um, let's let's pick up on that one now. Actually, uh, so Vanessa, if we're saying that it, she is pregnant, and we'll get through this in a moment, but if she is, are we realistically thinking that season eight is going to cover a period of about nine months? Yeah, that's um that's a good question. And what really kind of blows my mind thinking, you know, we have six episodes. It's not even a full ten episode season. It's a shortened season just like last year and even one episode. Long um it just I feel like there's so much to get through that they've set up in season seven. And I'm not sure how they're going to cover everything unless there is some kind of a time jump. Um, I'm assuming they'll start the season where they left off, but I feel like at some point they're going to have to skip ahead a few months. Um, you know, we've got Cersei who's pregnant. I don't think that's going to last. I, I don't think she's going to end up having that baby, but um, I think the only reason to make Daenerys be pregnant would be for her to have the child otherwise what's the point so i feel like they're gonna have to do you know if if that is the case they're gonna have to do some kind of time jump in my opinion yeah i, I mean i think this is quite interesting because i think that we don't often consider what time jumps there are in the show by implication and i was trying to think about this actually before we we went live the the distances and we quite often joke about jetpacks and time travel and getting from one place to another but the distances in Westeros are huge and they haven't got fast travel so if you just try and be logical about this and I know that they don't always do logical travel but if we try and be logical about this in order to get from King's Landing up to Winterfell that's a long journey so that might be a couple of months maybe even a little bit more I think the working assumption is that they're going to go up there and then maybe they'll be hanging around for a bit and then maybe they'll be coming back down to King's Landing or some of them will be coming back down to King's Landing. And before you know it, you've already got five months, oh, it's the, the next season spanning five months. It won't feel like it because it's only a few short episodes, but it's already going to be best part of half a year. So I don't think that saying is it really going to be nine months is actually stretching that 
too far. The Night King and the Army of the Dead seem to be walking ridiculously slowly southwards, so at least they were beforehand. So um, I dread to think how long it'll take them to get all the way down, uh, sort of, yeah, from the wall to Winterfell to start with. But if they're pushing even further south, then I don't know how long it'll be. So the, the, I think <laughs> the short answer, Klaus, is that um, uh, yes, I think the season could last nine months. I think that it's it's part and parcel of how the show is structured that we don't notice the passage of time. But they did seem to be doing it roughly a year per season very roughly to kind of match the fact that you know the younger actors are getting older each year and so it would make sense if the next season also takes a longer period of time but i don't know it's it yeah. seems that they've got a lot of action to pack into that last season i mean it took the white walkers what seven seasons to get to the wall so <laughs> like, you know i can see him taking a while to get anywhere of importance yeah, he certainly takes the scenic route, doesn't he? <laughs> um, okay, so uh, we've got, uh, we've got, I think, to the point where we agree that Daenerys can theoretically have children, both in the books and on the show. And I think it was quite heavily foreshadowed in the show when Jon was there doing his, uh, his, his really smooth moves on Daenerys down in the dragon pit. And he was like saying, oh, so... Um, uh, who told you you couldn't have children? Was this was a a, 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 a witch who, who who hated you? You know why should you believe her? So it was like the it, there was a lot of um, hinting going on there that that sh she could actually have children. And Tyrion, incidentally, also when he was talking about su succession when they're at Dragonstone, that was also an issue about whether or not she can have children. So it was it was actually in quite a few of the episodes, this idea that she might have children. Um, do we think, uh, Vanessa, that she will be pregnant? So if we're saying that, yes, it might be a couple of months journey and uh, we don't know exactly at which point John did that knocking on the door um, uh, on, on the boat, but... Uh, let's assume that this was quite early on. A couple of months may well have passed by the time they get to Winterfell, maybe even more. Do we think that she might be pregnant by the time we get there? I think she would probably have to be. I mean, if you know, if we're talking about you know getting through that nine month period, it's going to have to have already happened, I would think, by the time the season starts. So do you think that there, as part of the plot, it is therefore necessary for Daenerys to get, to have children? Because this is the thing that I, a lot of people I, I find in, not just in the chat, but in my comments, they're, they're sort of saying, why do they have to have children? Why is everyone assuming that they're going to have children? Do we, do we think that that's the next logical step in their character arcs? It's really tough to say. I mean, I guess it depends on what your viewpoint is as far as how this whole thing is going to wrap up. Um, I know a lot of people think the Iron Thorn is going to go away and it's going to be seven individual kingdoms again. You know, maybe so, maybe not. Um, are the Targa Targaryens going to be in power again? Who knows? You know, it's, it's really kind of up in the air. Um, I can't really see the point of having her be pregnant and having a baby if there isn't some importance to that child. And if they ended up getting married, um, then that baby would be the heir if there is, you know, a Seven Kingdoms troll at the end of everything. So my personal feeling is, I, I know a lot of people are debating, you know, is John going to die? Is Danny going to die? Are they both going to die? Um, just, this is strictly from the point of view of seeing how much time George has put into writing about the Targaryens with all the history and everything, I, I think, you know, he must really like those characters or that family to put that amount of time into writing about them. So my personal feeling is I don't see him killing them off completely. Otherwise, why spend all this time writing about them? You know, um, whether or not they'll be in power, like I said, I don't know, but I feel like there's got to be at least, you know, one remnant to, to kind of carry on the name, if nothing else. So, um, yeah, I, you know, other than that, like I, 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 I think maybe having this child, if there is some kind of conflict between the two of them, you know, when she finds out 
that he's actually a Targaryen himself. And, you know, if that becomes a, a point of contention because he's actually got a claim now, you know, if she's pregnant, I feel like any kind of conflict they could have would surely go away. I mean, because John has repeatedly said in the books, I, I think he said it in the show to you, that um, he does not want to father a bastard. So he's not going to let her have some child out of wedlock. Um, and besides the fact that I think a political marriage would be very expedient for the both of them as far as getting the North to support, you know, her path to the throne, you know, if they've got their guy in their corner, that's, you know, he's going to be sharing power with her. I think that would be a little bit more easy for them to accept. Um, so like I said, I think, you know, having that child might help cement that and, avoid any potential conflicts that they may have between the two of them. But I mean, other than that, I'm really not sure. Like I said, I don't know if that kid's ever going to rule or if even the Targaryens are going to rule when all is said and done. Yeah. I, I, I'd quite like to get onto the, the, whether the baby survives and the Targaryen survive towards the end of this. Cause I think we, we can build up to that. I, I think that you're right. Definitely that George does love the Targaryens. <laughs> But I think that that leaves it open to the idea that this story is the story of the end of the Targaryens, because I don't think he likes the Disney ending. I think that that, that he's uh, uh, he's very much uh, wanting to make keep it as real as possible. And so I think that he would actually quite like, as this is the end of his whole story, he's not going to tell any story after this, perhaps this is the end of the Targaryens. I'm just going to leave that one hanging there for a moment. Um, uh, got a couple of super chats I want to come to in just one second, but just one I think... Um, I'll, oh, go, go, go just on. One, one point I was just going to make. Um, I, I think it's a little unfair to say the whole mess that Westeros has been in is all the Targaryens fault because they were in a mess before the Targaryens even showed up. I mean, the seven kingdoms were always, you know, fighting between themselves. So, and, and there were good Targaryen kings as well. I think the whole system is the problem, not necessarily which family is in charge. Um, so, you know, I could see, and I, and I know you don't probably want to get into this too much, but um, I could see maybe doing like a great council and choosing a ruler um, sort of like, I think Rome had tried to do that at one point, um, and, ha you know, choosing a successor rather than like just assigning it to your heir. Um, so maybe that would be something that would happen in the future, but, um, I don't, I don't necessarily think it's just getting rid of the Targaryens because their system was bad. The, the system was bad before they showed up. Just my two cents. Uh, I would agree. And, uh, and I like the idea that there might be a great council, uh, that, decides on who rules and indeed how the whole continent is ruled um that that really works for me and i mean clearly the targaryens weren't all bad uh, there were quite a lot of bad ones but they weren't all bad um but i just want to quickly dip into the uh the the chat because we did have a couple of super chats um uh yensid hi yensid uh, uh i got your message on Patreon, and I've got your question. We'll come to that in just one moment. But thank you very much for this super chat. Uh, just simply saying, Westeros needs a family planning clinic. Uh, where, where would where would be the fun in that? Uh, of all these bastard children, it's uh, it's it's half the fun capture. But but uh, yeah, um, uh, it would it would certainly change the story. Uh, and nine nickels uh, again. Thank you very much for the super chat. Uh, saying, do you think that the child she carries could be promised to the Night King? I think that's a really interesting idea. This, uh, and it's something that uh, I know a lot of other YouTubers have started picking up on the really quite obvious point that the White Walkers all seem to be male, and the Children of the Forest all seem to be female, and the 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 legend we have of the Knights King, who is is clearly some sort of uh, reference to the Night King that we have on the show is very much about him and relating to uh, the only female, apparently the only female other that we know of. So, so is this actually a story about them yearning for a female in some way? Because we know that uh, Craster was just giving them all his his male children. But what what, what do you think, Vanessa? Do you think um, casting this forward a bit that? the child that Daenerys is carrying, if we assume that she is carrying a child, could be promised to the Night King. 
Um, I don't think she would let that happen. <laughs> I feel like she would say, hey, take me instead. I mean, there's there's no way I could see her giving up her child. Um, no, I, I don't I don't see that happening at all. Um, I don't think John would do it either. Um, they would probably sacrifice themselves before giving up their child to the Night King. Okay, clear and unambiguous. I think that there's, for me, there's a, a I, I would agree neither of them would want to. I think there's definitely some kind of a, a, a story theme here that we need to explore, which is about the idea of the whether the others are looking for the feminine in some way. Um, and that's something I want to explore at some point in, in a few future videos, because I think it's quite a, uh, an interesting theme. But can I, I, I want to bring us back to this idea of the story arcs for both John and Daenerys. And when people say, oh, why is it that they, why do we think they have to be having a baby? For me, it actually has to come down to where where is the next logical place for their story arcs to go. And John, from very early on in the books, says again and again, he's thinking about when he has children and the fact that he doesn't want to have bastard children because of the way that he felt when he was growing up. And Daenerys often thinks about whether or not she can have children. And so it, it, it seems that those two characters have to have something to do with them having a child or the potential for them to, having, to have a child. And so I think that it makes logical sense to me for both of them if the, there is a child in the mix somewhere. Whether or not that child is actually born is another matter, and we'll come on to that in a moment. But I think the idea that both of them could be parents is actually going to be an important next step in their own personal character journeys, uh, if you like. Um, can I uh, now bring us on to this idea of if we're saying that, yes, Daenerys can have children, uh, and we're saying that it's entirely possible that by the time she gets up to Winterfell, she will realize that she is pregnant. She will know. I suspect that they will probably make sure that someone like Miss Sande knows. Um, but is she going to tell people? Is she going to tell John? Is she going to tell other people? Or is she going to keep it to herself? What, what, what do you think her, her reaction will be to this news that she's pregnant? Um, well, if she finds out before they get to Winterfell, then I would assume she would tell John when she wouldn't really have a reason not to, I would think. If they get to Winterfell and um, John gets the revelation that he's actually a Targaryen and that becomes a point of contention, I could see maybe she'll keep that in her back pocket and not want to tell anyone just yet, um, just until whatever issues they have get settled. Um, but yeah, I mean, you, you unless she plans to get rid of the child, you're going to have to tell people at some point. Um, so, you know, I, I feel like it will come out at, you know, fairly early on. Yeah, I mean, I think I would agree with that. I think that it's the, the, the drama will be her letting people know in one way, shape or form that she is pregnant and i think that a lot of this and i mean i've said this on a different number of different streams on a number of different topics but what happens in episode one of the last season and also episode two of the last season really depends on the iteration of people arriving at, at winterfell uh, when she and uh John get there when uh, Jamie arrives up, when he tells them about the fact that Cersei is going to renege on the agreement. Uh, how are they going to react to uh, the, what happens when uh, presumably Bran and Sam say, oh, by the way, did you know that you're actually secretly a Targaryen? So the iteration of all these different things, what happens first, what happens second, is actually going to affect hugely the action because what whether or not Danny tells people uh, that she is pregnant uh, with you know with John that will how that has reacted uh, the reaction to that will depend hugely on whether or not 
people already know that John is secretly a Targaryen or whether they don't know whether John is secretly a Targaryen. But at a sort of a high level, how do you think John will react personally to the news that Danny is pregnant, assuming that she will be? I, well, like I said, he doesn't want to father a bastard. So I think his first reaction would be like, we need to get married because I'm not having a bastard child because I know what it was like and I'm not going to do that to my own kid. But I, I would think John would like to be a father. He's, um, you know, I don't, he doesn't reference it too terribly much in the show, but I, he thinks about it quite a bit in the books. Um, you know, kind of wistfully thinking how he'll never be a father. He'll never hold his child in his arms. And so, I mean, I think I imagine just like, you know, most people when they're in love and they find out they're going to have a child together, it's an exciting time. You know, it's no matter what else is going on in your life, that, that news is like, you know, my my family's going to carry on. It's it's exciting time for people to become parents. So I can't imagine him being too terribly upset at the news. Um, it's could, it could, the timing could definitely be better, you know, with the, the white walkers on the way and having to, you know, go to war pretty much. But, uh, but yeah, I, one thing I did think about though, um, the point of view and having her be pregnant, maybe it's a way to get John to ride a dragon. You know, she's out of commission and she can't, you know, hop on Drogon and fight. You know, I got, you got a spare Targaryen over here, you know, maybe he could try riding one and take on the White Walkers. So, um, and I really hope we see that. I would be very excited to see that. Yeah, that's a really good point, actually. And and I think that we will see John ride a dragon. I think that that's, uh, that makes a huge amount of sense that he does ride the dragon. And I think that the three dragon riders then will be Daenerys and John and the Night King. Um, uh, but let's not get into the whole three heads of the dragon uh, thing. Uh, can I put it to you then, and I would agree, obviously, yes, having a baby or the prospect of a baby is clearly a happy thing. The the the, the showrunners, the writers, uh, maybe George R. R. Martin in the books will want to cre create as much tension and excitement as possible. So if I put a scenario to you when you say John's going to be delighted, let's put the scenario that John arrives there and then uh, Sam and Bran confront him and say, hey, do you realize you're a secret Targaryen? And that woman you've brought up north, she's actually she's actually your aunt. And then he goes, whoa, hang on a moment, what's going on here? And he stumbles into the next room. And then Daenerys says, I'm so glad you're here. Uh, I just want you to know that I'm pregnant with your child. How, how will he react then? So I'm going to separate this show and books. So in the books, with the world that George has created, you know, yes, incest is kind of a bad thing, but it depends on the level of the relationship. Um, and, you know, Targaryen's brother to sister is, hasn't even been an issue. So in Danny's eyes, that wouldn't be a problem whatsoever. But even some of the other families have had incest going back generations. I mean, Tywin Lannister married his first cousin, Joanna. Um, there were uncles that married nieces in the Stark family. So it's not unheard of. And even in our own medieval history, you had, um, you know, interfamily marriage, not necessarily immediate family, but extended family wasn't unheard of. So in the books, honestly, I don't see it would be as big a deal as people like to think it might be. In the show, I could see them making a big deal out of it just for drama's sake. Yeah, I, I, I think you're probably right. And I, but I think that what will probably happen with all of this, and we, I, I want to get on to the Northern Lords because I had uh, one of my patrons, uh, Johnson Baptiste, was asking about this. But um, I think that all of the tensions and the questions and, and the, uh, the concerns will suddenly at some point, maybe episode two-ish, something around that, have to get shelved because the army of the dead will reach Winterfell. And that's, I think for me, that is the moment at which everybody goes, okay, well, we can deal with this whole, you're my aunt, yet you're carrying my child business in a moment. Right now we're fighting to save humanity. So I, I have a feeling that what might happen 
is that everything's going to come to light and then suddenly everyone has to focus on something else and we've got all this simmering tension that has to be um, dealt with after the big battle or, or the big confrontation happens up at Winterfell. But um, I mentioned the Northern Lords. Uh, John St. Baptiste, uh, who incidentally, I see he's out there in chat. If you like music, John St. Baptiste has got a great music channel. Do go and check him out. He's, he does a lot of uh, think pieces about how, how music works and how we relate to music. So please do go and check out his channel. But, but his question was, will this be a deal breaker for the Northern Lords? And, and I think what we mean by that is is when they sent John down to Danny, they were very much, are you really, we don't want a Targaryen back up here again. We don't want the dragons back up here again. And so when he comes back up, not only does it turn out that he's a Targaryen, but also he seems to now be fathering a whole new line of Targaryens who will be ruling the North and everywhere else. Is this going to be a deal breaker in some way for the Northern Lords, do you think? Well, once they learn the White Walkers are on the way, I can't imagine it will become too big of a point. I mean, they're they're going to have to work together, or they're all going to die. Um, I think if and if they learn about all this before they realize what danger they're in, I think it will really hinge on Sansa and her reaction, because um, they would definitely rally behind her. And if she still supports John and you know, says, hey, you know, it, we should really be allies. We've got, you know, the threat of the White Walkers are coming. We've got the threat of Cersei. It really works to our benefit to work together, regardless if she's a Targaryen. You know, she's not her father. Um, if John trusts her, then I trust her. If that's, you know, how she reacts, I think they'll fall behind her and support the alliance. Um, if she really fights against it and isn't too thrilled about it, you know, it could go, it could go differently. But um, I, I can't imagine, you know, with, with Arya there as well, and we all know how much Arya loves Jon, I think Arya would definitely encourage her to be supportive. Um, I just, and plus how much Sansa's grown over the past several seasons, and she's very dip diplomatic. I can't see her trying to cause even more conflict knowing what kind of danger they're in. Yeah, I would agree. I think Sansa is critical to this. And and I think that it's entirely possible that John, at some point, perhaps when he realises that he is not Ned's son, perhaps when he realises that he is uh, a Targaryen uh, with a, a child on the way, perhaps he will actually take a step back from this idea of him being the king of the north of him being lord of winterfell and he'll say you know what sansa is the lady of winterfell and she is the person that you should have as your leader in the north and uh, whether or not he fully embraces his targaryen heritage I, I don't know but i could certainly imagine that it wasn't a thing that he put himself forward for and when people did put him put him forward for it uh liana mormont it was it was about because he had ned stark's blood running through his veins and he doesn't and so i think that he would accept that fact that actually he was not who they thought he was therefore it's possible that he might take that step right back so he's uh, when we're saying it's a whether or not it's a sort of a deal breaker for them i think that he may well just sort of say you know what sansa is the person he should be following i'm going to take a step back i agree and let's focus in on the actual real threat to humanity which is yeah. the army of the dead he never wanted the power to begin with so i could completely see him you know ceding it to sansa and you know letting her be lady of winterfell and you know i'm going to be here and i'm going to be fighting the threat but you you take over the ruling duties. That's that's fine with me. So I could I could see that. Yes, and we've had uh, another super chat. Uh, Kay Jackson, thank you so much. Incredibly generous, fifty dollars, uh, saying yes. Uh, it is real dollars. So thank you very much. Uh, that's that's incredibly kind. Uh, and, and no question either. I would happily have, have talked for a long time for fifty dollars. That's uh, that's incredibly generous. Um, uh, but. Uh, I just want to take a very quick pause because a few people have been uh, have been talking uh, very kindly, saying some very nice things about my second channel, um, which I launched yesterday. And I just wanted to take a moment 
uh, to just thank everyone for their support. The the well told tale, if you've not uh, heard me talk about it before, is my second channel which I launched, and it's basically it's an audio narration channel. It's just me reading the best science fiction, fantasy, speculative fiction so, uh, stories ever written. Uh, I've started episode one with The War of the Worlds. We're going to work our way through that, and then we're going to go on to Frankenstein, and then we're going to go on to some other excellent things, I'm sure. So um, I just wanted to say a huge thank you uh, to anyone who's gone over there and uh, and liked the uh, what I've put up there, uh, and, and the people who've gone onto my GoFundMe page as well. It's been incredibly generous. Uh, so thank you so much um, uh, to everyone who's been supportive of that. It's something I've been been really excited to launch and uh, and I've been completely blown over by uh, how much everyone else has appreciated it as well so uh, thank you uh, uh, the other thing I would say as part of that uh, patrons I always say this but I can't do this without you thank you uh, to my patrons uh, and I've been trying to work out what I do I wanted to set up a separate patreon for the well-told tale because I want to make sure that firstly that can always remain completely ad-free during the story. I, I want it not to be disturbed halfway between the reading uh, and secondly I want to start trying to build up kind of a fund so that we can get buy some rights for some more recent stories not just public domain things. So I set up a separate Patreon account for that. Um, uh, if you go onto Patreon and look for the well-told tale you'll find it. But if you are one of my patrons for In Deep Geek, I, I wanted to, to thank you for your support and recognize that and honor that. And so uh, for, from now for, for the foreseeable future, every single episode of The Well Told Tale, the audio I will put up there for all $5 and more patrons over on my uh, In Deep Geek channel as well, because I, I thought, you know what, I... I I cannot do this without you, and that's just a little thank you to you. So don't. Uh, th there will be extra benefits if you're wanting to go over onto the the Well Told Tale Patreon uh, benefits uh, connected to that channel. But for all of the my patrons over on this channel, uh, you will get access to every single episode of. Uh, the well-told tale as well. Uh, so, so that's my little stuff uh, of things coming forward. Uh, Vanessa, is there anything you want to just sort of, sort of flag up for people? Things that you've got coming up. Um, well, just continuing to write for Watchers on the Wall and Westworld Watchers. Um, not a lot of Westworld news coming out, obviously, uh, but hopefully we'll be picking up, um, getting some more news about when the final season is going to be airing. And we're also working on doing a podcast over at Watchers and um, planning to rewatch all seven seasons in preparation for season eight. So um, we'll be discussing that there. Excellent. And uh, if you haven't, I, I I always point at this picture, which is uh, which is one of Vanessa's pictures here. It's a Westworld, but I always realise that it's so far out of focus you can't see how good it is. So, uh, so apologies. There is a link down in the description to her art page so please do go and check that out uh, and if you've not uh, ever checked out either Westworld Watchers or Watchers on the Wall where on earth have you been go and have a look at it they're, they're the go-to place for the information on what is going on in the world of uh, both Westworld and Game of Thrones um, so uh, I think uh, if we come back now to the, uh, the, the what we were talking about which is the reactions to this, uh, the idea of them having uh, a baby. Um, one question I had from Yensid, who's another one of my patrons, I think I saw there in the chat as well, uh, was will the gender of the baby make any difference? Now, this I think is talking in terms of sort of Westerosi politics, and I think we probably have to cast forward nine months, assuming that the season lasts for nine months. Uh, will it make a difference whether this is a boy baby or a girl baby? Yeah, um, <laughs> my own kind of tin foily pet theory is that she might have twins, uh, and that's solely based on the fact that in the books, um, I think she thinks about having a daughter and John thinks about having a son, and so that would cover both bases. <laughs> but um, yeah, honestly, you know, Westeros has accepted, um, you know, if we're thinking about the baby maybe being a ruler at some point, they've accepted a queen. I mean, they got Cersei now. Um, we've got people ready to follow Daenerys and, you know, have her rule over them. So 
you know, I think they're becoming a little more equal opportunity. So maybe it doesn't matter if it's a boy or a girl. Yeah, and I think it, it shouldn't matter. And I think that one of the huge differences in, in terms of politics in Westeros, in the Seven Kingdoms, over the course of the uh, the books, but also particularly in the show, because it's gone a little bit further forward, was that when you look at who was the head of each of the families at the start of the first book, it was all, they were all men. When you get to uh, where we are now, or, you know, perhaps just a, a, a season or so ago, you look across and you say you've got Daenerys and then you had, um, uh, um, a, a, I've forgotten the name of every single person on the show now, just when I was saying better, but, but you look at, you've got Sansa, who's effectively acting as head over uh, the Starks. Um, you look down in Dawn, uh, you look over in the Iron Islands, you look everywhere you go, there's actually a woman in charge. And that is a huge cultural shift. Uh, to a point where you can actually say, yes, you do not have to be a man in order to be the ruler of somewhere. And that was something that Dawn was always a whole lot more liberal on, uh, but the rest of the, uh, the the Seven Kingdoms wasn't quite as liberal on these kind of issues and saying it had to be a man in charge. So it's entirely possible that we might reach a stage where it doesn't matter so much. I, I, I like the idea that you sort of dropped in there about that she might have twins could you just sort of unpack that a little bit more for us why why do you think that she might have twins is this something that you think is foreshadowed in some way or do you just think it might be quite nice do you think that both of them would survive do you think it's a boy girl what what tell us a bit more about this twins idea just like i said it was just purely based off the fact that john always thinks about having a son and holding his son in his arms and daenerys thinks about having a daughter in the books and so I was just saying, well, you know, if they have twins and one of each, boy and a girl, covers both bases. So, you know, they both get what they want. But, you know, who knows? I, I can't, I'm trying to think and I can't remember if there are many instances of twins or multiples in the Targaryen history. And I can't, I mean, I don't think we learn about it too much. You know, we have, like, there's twins from the Reach in the books and then Cersei and Jaime. But honestly, I can't remember very many instances of twins, period. I feel that there was, but I can't, for the life of me, remember any of them. Um, yeah. it's, it's one of those things where uh, yeah, the life of a Game of Thrones YouTuber is I spend a lot longer than I probably should for the, my sanity's sake staring at a Targaryen family tree. And I feel that that somewhere along the line there was there were some twins, but I can't, maybe there'll be some clever people in the chat who will be able to, uh, to remind us. Um, but uh, we've had a couple of good questions in the chat that I think perhaps we can come on to in terms of uh, the... The, the baby and what, what might happen from that. And uh, someone, and I will try and find out who it was as I'm talking, um, uh, uh, it was uh, Joe News, Newski, if that's how you pronounce it, um, saying, John was brought back to life by the Red God. What if it is a shadow baby? So this is a, a and it's a, I've seen this question come up a couple of other times, and it's, it's a connection. It's the the idea is that he is in some way a fire white. Certainly in the books, I think on the show they're not really going to pick up on this. But George R. R. Martin has very much hinted that when John comes back, in some way he's going to be a fire white. He said that Beric Dondarrion was very much paving the way for John in this. Now, if he is a fire white, whatever that means. Does this mean that any children he has in the books will be some kind of weird shadow baby or fire whitey baby or or something that's not not human in any way? Um, that's a good question. And, you know, like I said, I don't think the show is really going to touch on it. They kind of glossed over the fact that he was brought back at all. Um, but in the books, I don't feel like his resurrection is going to be exactly the same as it is in the show. I think it's going to be a little more involved. I think there might be some old God magic involved with Bran and blood Raven. So will he be exactly like Beric? I mean, we all, I also think he's going to work into ghost and live in ghost for a while. I think his return will be different somehow. Um, maybe similar, but 
I think there will be some differences. And you know, I do think it will have to be some kind of a magical baby for it to happen, period. Um, you know, maybe it's like a one-time magical event, just like Danny giving birth to the dragons. Um, but yeah, I don't think it's going to be a shadow baby. I think it's going to be a real human baby. Um, maybe it's going to have some kind of special powers or something. I don't know. Um, but, you know, even the, the Targaryens and the Starks um, already have some magical abilities latent with them and then with the you know the skin changing and the green seeing on the stark side and the um targaryen prophetic dreams and the dragon writing on the targaryen side so you know even if it was just a normal stark and a normal targaryen having a baby that baby is probably going to have some kind of special abilities anyway um but yeah i mean that's a good question and i don't know exactly how he will handle that in the books but yeah i don't think it's gonna be a shadow baby <laughs> Yeah, I think the shadow baby thing is uh, a little bit of uh, confusion with Melisandre here. So I think her shadow magic, although she claims that this is kind of tied up with the Red God, this is stuff that she learned in a shy, where the shadow binders, that's a kind of magic that they do. And it's not a sort of a Red God thing specifically. That's my view. I, th I know that others might have different views on this one, but I think that's very much, pardon me, an a shy kind of magic. So I don't think that she will have a shadow baby. Uh, Daenerys will have a shadow baby. Uh, somebody there, uh, apologies, I didn't see who it was, was asking whether or not this might be a monstrosity. Now, there's lots of kind of hints of this in terms of, so we didn't actually see it, but Danny was told that, that the child that she was born, that, that she gave birth to Rago was a monstrosity, a sort of a dragonish baby uh, of some kind. And this is something we hear happens quite a lot in the Targaryen family history is that they, there's, there's some kind of something in the genetics, which means sometimes they give birth to babies with slightly dragony features. And so do we think that might happen? And I think perhaps connected to that, we have to also ask, is there a potential for her to die in childbirth? Because if you look at a lot of the central characters, John's mother, it would appear, died in childbirth. Tyrion's mother died in childbirth, and we get Danny as well. And then you think, hang on a moment, is there some kind of theme here going on that we need to pay attention to? So uh, that's a kind of a double header question to you there, Vanessa. So apologies for that one. First of all, is do you think it's possible that a baby born of her and John might be a mon monstrosity, whatever that means? And do you think that there's a chance that she might die in childbirth? So for the first part of the question, um, I don't think it will be a monstrous child. I mean, she's already given birth to one, and I feel like it would be a little redundant to have it happen again. Um, and I'm just trying to think, like, I can't, I wish I had, you know, researched the Targaryen family tree some more. Um, but I can't remember... Is it when they, when it's more, you know, because I mean, they have the brothers and sisters together quite a bit. Um, I can't remember if the, the monstrous children happened more when they went outside of the family or if it happened more when they went inside the family or if it didn't matter. I really can't remember. Um, but, but yeah, I mean, like I said, it's already been done in her storyline. So I don't really see the point in, in doing it again. As far as her dying in childbirth, yeah, it's possible. Um, you know, they she lost her mother. John lost his mother. Um, it happens a lot. I don't like that idea. I'm not just because I like Danny, but I because I feel like it would be kind of a letdown for her character arc for her just to kind of go out in this mundane fashion. Um, but I mean, I could see. You know, if you look at the the curse or prophecy or whatever from Mary Mazder, and she does say, you know when you when your womb quickens and you bear a living child then drogo will come back to you you could take that to mean you know he's not coming back to life so she'll be reunited reunited with him in death so you know i could see you inferring from that that you know she will die in childbirth she bears a living child and then she dies and is reunited with drogo so i think you can definitely make the case that that will happen but like i said with her whole storyline, you can like Danny or you can hate her, um, but she 
came from nothing. I mean, she was an orphan. She was run out of her home. She lived, you know, hand to mouth. They had nothing. She had to rely on Viserys for everything, who was a horrible big brother, <laughs> you know, abused her verbally, emotionally, physically, sexually. Um, you know, she really didn't have much of a chance growing up. And to become what she became and rise above all of that and, you know, getting married off to this person that she had no idea about, who was very scary to her and having this rough induction into the Dothraki way of life, to have survived all of that and, you know, become this conqueror and this ruler has been an amazing feat for her. And, you know, like I said, you, you may not like her and you may think that she's too ambitious or she's too harsh or maybe she's going mad, which I totally don't agree with at all. But she's had an amazing journey throughout the show and the books. And to have that end because she has a baby just seems like a very anticlimactic end to her story. Uh, yeah, I think it probably would be. I don't think that I would put that past George R. R. Martin. But uh, yes, I think it would be quite anticlimactic. I just want to say quickly, uh, Laura D, thank you. I did, spotted, uh, I think it was Stephen uh, Stark pointed out, it was you who was talking about asking the question about the monstrosity. So thank you. Um, yes, I agree. It it does feel quite anticlimactic that she might die in childbirth after all that she's been through. For me, if she does, then that the implication would be that she has to, in order for it to be bittersweet in some way, she she must be giving birth to something which is representative of the future in some way. So perhaps then the child will survive. And we'll get on to just one second, I think, the future of this child should this child be born and not be a monstrosity and all the other things that we've said are possible. Uh, but we did have uh, one question that I saw uh, that, uh, who was it? It was Pablo, I think, uh, was asking whether they will get married. Now, this, I think, is quite an interesting one because John was very clear, you, you said it earlier, John was very clear all the way through, he did not want to have a bastard child. So do you think that John's knee-jerk reaction, maybe even a thought-through reaction, when he finds out that Daenerys is pregnant, would be to get married to her or, or to propose to her or, or something along those lines? Yeah, I think if, you know, she ends up carrying the baby to term and having the baby, he, he'll want to get married. He's not, he doesn't want to father a bastard. He's, he's said that numerous times. So he's not going to allow that child to be born out of wedlock, in my opinion. I mean, that's assuming they have time, of course. You know, <laughs> they, other, other things are taking priority at the moment. But um, I can't imagine him allowing her to have that baby without them being married. Yeah, I'd agree. I think the question is whether or not they find time to do that with the army of the dead uh, invading and humanity to save and all the rest of it i think they've got quite a packed agenda so whether or not they actually find time to be able to do that uh, i don't know uh, but it's in, it's entirely possible that well it's entirely likely that john assuming he gets over the hang on a moment this is my aunt business which i think should take him a while uh, to get over given his upbringing but once he does get over that then yes i think he will very much want to be married to daenerys so that he can bring up a child within uh within a, a marriage um kerry mcdonald thank you so much for the super chat i just wanted to say hi and thank you a super busy hi uh, back to you kerry i don't really have a question just wanted to help you all out a little bit thanks very kind of you thank you so much um the Shall we move on um, to this idea of if we've accepted, and I know that there are a lot of ifs in all of this, if we've accepted Danny can have children, which I think we've agreed on, if we've accepted the fact that her story arc and John's story arc both seem to be hinting on the show, there's a lot of heavy foreshadowing that she might have a child or they she might become pregnant. If we accept that the that Danny survives the season 
or at least a large chunk of the season and that covers nine months or more of time and she has this child what then is is this child then going to be the heir to the iron throne that everybody's going to recognize or 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 what what's what do you think is the the logical place in the story for a child of john and danny well assuming that john and daenerys defeat the white walkers and save westeros then i would have a hard time believing that they wouldn't be supportive of them ruling or whoever's left or if it's only the child and they both die um as long as they have a you know capable regent to to raise it, um, I could see that. I mean, I you know, hey, you you saved all of our lives, and we're gonna like throw you to the wayside because we don't like your family. You know, I I, I would have a hard time believing that. Um, you know, a lot of people don't think there's gonna be an Iron Throne. I go back and forth. Um, you know, we definitely see it destroyed in um, the vision that she has on the show. Um, King's Landing is kind of pretty much in ruins, um, so that's definitely possible. Um, what I think might happen is, you know, Daenerys was willing to let um, the Iron Islands kind of be their own kingdom um, because they, you know, threw their support, support behind her and brought the ships. Um, you know, maybe they will break up, but be kind of um, a loose confederation of, of kingdoms, maybe like the European Union where they, you know, make treaties and um you know have commerce amongst themselves and don't fight all the time but have one kind of loose headquarters in the capital that you know ha helps manage the cooperation i guess um so i could see that and you know maybe sansa would be ruling the north and the tullys would rule the riverlands if edmure is still alive uh, you know um so I, I mean i could see that being a possibility and then having, like I said, maybe there's going to be like a council to, you know, like whoever is going to kind of be the the main figurehead in charge of this whole operation. Um, so, you know, I, I do think that there is going to be a little bit more of a democratic solution at the end. Um, I think it would be a little disappointing for all of this to happen and then things go back to exactly the way they've been for several hundred years. So, um so that's kind of my two cents. But I mean, I like I said, I don't, unless the child ends up being crazy or, you know, something, um, I could see them supporting the child of the two heroes that saved Westeros, if, if that's how it plays out. Yeah, I think I have two current favorite theories here. And I'll start with my second favorite theory, which is that you get Sansa and Tyrion who sort of enact the end of the, this is high level history, but the end of the War of the Roses, the Wars of the Roses, which was what George R. R. Martin initially based this whole idea on, which was you get House Lancaster or Lannister and York Stark. And what happened at the end of all of that was to end all, all this fighting between everyone, uh, the heirs of both of those two houses married effectively and i could certainly see that the heir of house stark who who will almost certainly be sansa i have a feeling the sansa may well be the only stark standing that's an entire different uh, live stream but that's that's i think that she's likely to be the main stark left and Tyrion as the only lannister left standing at the end of it i could see them coming back together and uh having th this child as a sort of a ward that they're looking after in some kind of way i could certainly see that incidentally i'm i'm uh, i i'm gonna try and get a proper historian a proper medieval historian on at some point in the next few weeks uh, who will be able to talk to us about the wars of the roses and what this actually means in terms of game of thrones because we often bandy around this idea of the wars of the roses and what the implications of that might be for the story but i think what I would find really interesting, I hope you would as well, is actually getting somebody who has dedicated their life to understanding the Wars of the Roses and therefore helping us see where the links might be and what that might tell us about where the story is going. But that's 
that's completely by the by. That's just something that I, I was trailing for a, a few weeks' time. Uh, but that's my second favorite thing. My favorite thought at the moment is that this is the Song of Ice and Fire. This, in order for there to be some kind of balance, we have to push back both ice and fire. We cannot have dragons flying around all over the place, burning people however they want to, nor can we have these undead ice warriors coming around and killing whoever they want. In order for there to be any kind of sustainable future for humanity, both of those forces have to be pushed back. And I wonder whether that means, as I hinted earlier, the end of the Targaryens. And if that's the case, then does this mean that a baby Targaryen also will die? Now, that is quite sad, and I know that lots of people don't like this idea because they do not like the idea of a baby dying. I don't like the idea of a baby dying, but George R. R. Martin does do things we don't like him doing. So I think it's entirely possible that we could see the complete end of the Targaryens, including any child that John and Danny have. What what do you think of that idea, Vanessa? Um, it's it's possible. I just my only question is why even have her get pregnant in the first place just to kill the kid off? I mean, I feel like if she's gonna have a baby, there has to be a point to it. Um, and unless you know it's sacrificed to like it, this kid has to die in order to save Westeros, which is kind of analogous to Stannis's idea that. In, or Melisandre's really idea that they might have to sacrifice Shireen to save everyone. Um, but I mean, that, that to me is not, not a hero, you know? Um, I, I kind of agree with Davos, like what's one life against the life of thousands, everything, you know, everyone's life is precious. And so I just, I don't know, like I said, I mean, unless it's, there's a reason for it to die, I don't see the point in her being pregnant in the first place. Um, you know, I, I understand your point about the magic, you know, having to go away, but you know, the Targaryens really, I mean, they have like prophetic dreams or whatever, but you also have the green seeing and the warging and stuff that happens uh, that has happened before the dragons even came back and before magic was, you know, back brought back to the forefront. So there might always be some kind of lingering magic and, but even the Targaryens, if they don't have dragons, I mean, they're just not nearly as powerful. Um, so I can see the dragons dying. I can see the direwolves going away, the children of the forest, you know, all of the magical elements kind of being taken out, but I don't necessarily think all the Targaryens have to die. And maybe it's just because I really like the Targaryens um, and I don't want them to die, but, um, but you know, I feel like it could go either way. Um, my own personal preference is that there's at least one surviving and that doesn't mean they have to be in power and rule everything again, but I don't really like the idea of any of the families dying out, to be honest. Uh, yeah, I think it's too late for none of the families dying out. I think we, <laughs> I think that's definitely going to be happening. Uh, but I accept your point that uh, if a Targaryen survives, that doesn't necessarily mean that, um, that the dragons are going to be around. The dragons could go, but we could have, still have a Targaryen there. Um, we've had another couple of super chats that I want to come to in just one second, but I've got an while my brain is going down these horrible thoughts, uh, can I put an, an even worse thought uh, in your mind, Vanessa, which is somebody mentioned uh, a long time ago in the chat, so I can't honestly remember who it was and probably can't find it now, uh, Melisandre. Melisandre has had a number of times when she's talking about the power of a king's blood. She tried to get it from... Uh, Gendry uh, on the show, uh, Edric Storm in the, in the books. There's obviously the Shireen thing going on. If she is looking for somebody with some powerful blood in them, surely the most powerful king's blood there is going to be in the entirety of Westeros is the child of Daenerys and Jon, who would be the in undisputed Targaryen heir and King of the North heir. Do you think Melisandre will have evil designs on this baby? Um, and well, now to be fair, I don't necessarily think Melisandre's evil, <laughs> despite the things she's done. Um, because I, I actually kind of like Melisandre more so in the books. Um, but 
misguided for sure. She has very strange ideas about, you know, what it takes to save humanity. Um, but she's very firm in her convictions and she honestly believes that what she's doing is going to stop the apocalypse basically. Um, but I feel like when she sacrificed Shireen, it helped a little bit. Stannis lost. He died. His his battle was was lost. And so I would think her seeing that would make her realize, hey, maybe this isn't as what all it's cracked up to be. Maybe sacrificing uh, you know, King's blood doesn't always help things. Um, my own pet theory is that she's going to Volantis and gonna bring back some red priests to help like resurrect the you know, the forces fighting against the White Walkers so that they have their own like fire white army fighting against the others white army. <laughs> so I don't know who, who knows how that's going to end up. But um, is it possible? You know, you never know with her. She might get desperate enough to try something like that. But I don't think she would live very long um, because Daenerys and Jon are not Stannis and they aren't going to sit idly by and say, yeah, sure, sacrifice our kids. So um you know, even if she did manage to accomplish it, she would definitely be killed very quickly after that. Yeah, and I would, uh, sorry, I, when I throw out these thoughts, this isn't what I want to happen. It's just some random thoughts that I, that, that I have. Uh, right. I think, so Melisandre, just completely by the by, because I did a couple of videos on Melisandre a few months ago. When George R. R. Martin was asked who is the most misunderstood character in the entirety of your creation? The answer he gave was Melisandre. And I think that was for the reason that you say, is that she thinks that what she is doing is for right, for good reasons. I, she clearly does bad things, evil things that we would look at and say, hey, you shouldn't be killing children. Killing children is bad. But she thinks she is doing things for the right reasons. Uh, and she accepts the fact that she does stuff that perhaps you wouldn't normally do. But I do agree uh, completely with the idea of uh, her bringing back people in order to raise a whole load of fire whites. I think that this works incredibly strongly. With This isn't a battle of the living against the dead. This is a battle of ice whites against fire whites. And I think that is an incredibly strong theme. So, uh, so yes, I would agree with that one completely. Uh, I mentioned we had a couple of super chats uh, just quickly. Uh, Alyssa Muklu, uh, hi there, one of my patrons saying, uh, thank you for the well-told tale channel. You're very welcome. Uh, I'm really glad that people uh, are uh, enjoying that as much as I enjoyed doing it. So, so thank you so much. And uh, Tokin Joe says, hello, hi. Uh, what if, uh, so if the White Walkers are already past the wall, how will they have enough time to determine Danny is pregnant? Could that happen after the war? Uh, yeah, I think we sort of covered this a little bit, uh, but there's a few points here. Uh, first of all, they walk very slowly. Uh, that takes them months, certainly north of the wall, to get anywhere. So I think that it's probably fair that they have got a long time before they get to Winterfell. I think that the the time it takes, and I've been bandying around this two months, that's just my best guess. It might be a bit more, a bit less than that, but it certainly takes a matter of several weeks to get from King's Landing all the way up to Winterfell, even going by boat along part of the way. So it's fair to say that that could be, a if it is a couple of months, that there, by the time Danny arrives at Winterfell, she may well know or at least strongly suspect that she is pregnant so that is how this could happen it would have to be quite quick but that's the way it could happen but as you say yes it, it also could be a thing where she doesn't realize or find out until after a battle or after the war or something later on uh, but they certainly have flexibility on the show should they wish to do so to give her the time to get pregnant and realize she's pregnant before the army of the dead arrives at Winterfell, which is what I think we're all assuming is going to be happening. And they may not even go straight south. I mean, they might kind of go around the north for a bit to collect some more soldiers for their army. I was thinking they might even go um, down the wall and hit Castle Black to take out any chance that someone's going to come from the rear and attack them 
So yeah, I mean, it might take them a while. Yeah, agreed. So there's, it's it's entirely possible that, and and when I was doing the traveler's guide to the north, it was very obvious where there are a number of strongholds. So you will get the last hearth with the umbers, uh, and also potentially even car hold with the car stocks. If you remember, I think it was at the end of last season. Then uh, you had the young Ned Umber and uh, was it Alice Carstark, yeah. and they got sent out uh, on what seemed like quite a, <laughs> a, a harsh mission to why don't you yeah, go out and their toast. And against the, the against the White Walkers. So they are uh, coming I, <laughs> the, I think the implication is yes, the White Walkers will attack these other places before they get to Winterfell. Um, uh, so uh, poor young Ned Umber uh, and Alice Carstark there. Um, it doesn't do well to be named Ned in, in Westeros, apparently. <laughs> It, it doesn't no um so uh that's that's where the timing comes in i think they if they want to then there's they they can have the timing in there uh kerry mcdonald saying definitely going to the isle of faces definitely in the books in my view i think that's where it all's going to end in the books but they've just not done the isle of faces i was going to say any justice on, on the show they've not really mentioned it on the show so it's not a thing that they're going to be focusing on so, uh, yes, I think that they will have a slightly different trajectory of where they're going to attack and why uh, on the on the show. Uh, guys, we've got about, I think, about 10 more minutes. So I'm going to start wrapping up soon. Uh, so if you've got any more uh, questions that you are desperate to be asking, do drop them down in the chat now. But... Uh, well, that's uh, well. While well, people are doing that, uh, Vanessa, let's just kind of wrap this one up then. So, what's your overall thought then on on this? What what do we think? What what do you think we're going to see in terms of this whole pregnancy thing? Is is she going to be pregnant? Is she going to have a baby? And what's going to happen to the baby? What's putting it all together? Where do you think we're going to go with this? Um, I, I think she's going to be pregnant. I think she's going to have the baby. I, whether or not she survives, it's, that's really tough to say. I have, I kind of go back and forth on her and John on whether they both die, they both survive, one dies, the other doesn't. You know, we have, um, it's just interesting if you look at George's original outline, he has both of them surviving to the end of the series. Um, so, I mean, it's, it's possible he may have decided to, to um, it's really hard to say because everyone keeps focusing on oh, it's going to be bittersweet. It's going to be bittersweet. But what does that mean? I mean, better, bittersweet doesn't mean everyone dies. Um, bittersweet doesn't even mean that, you know, not everyone lives. Maybe everyone lives, but it's, you know, it's a really, I always think of Lord of the Rings. He always said he loved the ending of Lord of the Rings because, you know, you know, most of the good people lived, but they were haunted by what they'd been through, especially Frodo. He, he never was the same. He was never able to find happiness again. Um, I feel like that might be John. Not that he was ever a super happy person to begin with. Um, but it doesn't mean that they don't, the good guys don't win. It means that they had to sacrifice a lot to get to that point. And they had to suffer. And I think that definitely is going to happen. I think we are going to lose characters that we love. Um, like I said, I really... I don't want to commit to, yes, they're going to have a baby and the Targaryens are going to rule Westeros again and that baby's going to sit the Iron Throne because I don't really see that happening. Um, but I do think they're going to have the baby. I think that baby's going to live. I think there is going to be some part for this child to play in the future of, of Westeros um, because I feel like a lot of the main drive of the story is is on the children and how they're able to shape the future and I think John and Danny both come from places where they're very willing to compromise, very willing to reach out to groups different than them, very willing to listen to the plights of other people that are suffering and don't have the privileges that they've had growing up. And I think that if you know one of the, at least one of them survives, they'll be able to to teach that to their child and that child may help sh shape the future of Westeros in a positive direction. Um, but, you know, that just, that remains to be seen. But like, I, and my, my own personal hope is that they do have a child and that child has some part to play. Whether or not it's ruling, 
I don't know, but I, I would like to see that family live on in some way, shape or form. And do you think that that's going to be the same in the books as the show, or is there going to be a slight difference in the books? Um, I feel like there's going to be some similarities. Um, like, you know, obviously the, I think, you know, if the good guy guys win, they're going to win in the show and the books. I mean, the main plot beats I think will be the same. Some of the side plots I think may end differently. Um, but you know, who knows, maybe they'll decide to kill off somebody that lives in the books. Maybe they've done it before. Um, they could definitely do it again. Um, but I don't think it's going to be Cersei Lannister wins in the show and, you know, continues to rule Westeros and Jon becomes king of everything in the books. It's, it's not going to be that different in my opinion. Yeah, I think I'd agree. I think we're, we're definitely going to have the same broad ending in the books as we have in the show there will be slight differences i think that there will be some characters who survive in one and don't in the other i think that then there will be a difference in terms of what happens with the white walkers i think possibly even quite a significant difference but where it all broadly ends up i think is going to be the same thing uh, i just want to quickly pick up on a couple of super chats stephen stark says please come to con of thrones next year uh if, if that's aimed at me I, I then i'm definitely aiming to be at con of thrones next year i was incredibly jealous of of the people who were at con of thrones and i saw all the pictures and i saw all the, how much uh fun everyone was having i really really want to go next year so that's that's a definite for me as long as I can scrape together the money. But the 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 thing, it, it, it's really weird. If you excuse me for one moment, going off on a slight tangent here, it is a really weird thing doing what I'm doing at the moment that I talk on a daily basis to people like Vanessa. We, we've chatted for hours uh, just on the live stream uh, and, and elsewhere, and I've got a whole load of other friends out in the community that I have never met and it is really uh, it's really weird and quite sad actually and and I am desperate to get over uh, to Con of Thrones wherever it is and whenever it is next year just to meet up with people that's that's going to be my main aim so uh, yes if I can possibly make it I will definitely be there uh, highly highly recommend <laughs> <laughs> Excellent news, um, and uh, and and I've noted already that if there's going to be any kind of quiz, then I'm on Aziz's team. I don't think he participates anymore. He was a judge last time. I don't think they let him play. <laughs> <laughs> well, fair enough. Okay. Well, I'll uh, I'll make sure either I'm a judge, uh, or, or I'm going to try and decide who the second cleverest person is, which is clearly you, Vanessa. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Uh, okay, so uh, Klaus, uh, the other super chat we had here was Klaus. Uh, again, thank you so much. Uh, five euros. What proof does anyone have of John's descent? Only Brand's vision, who has fallen from a tower and also hit hard uh, with the head. Will anyone believe him? This is a this is an interesting point. I think uh, if I, I'll start off on this one, Vanessa, then throw to you. I think that the there's a difference here between the show and the books in that I think in the books Howland Reed is going to be the person who reveals what all that bit of backstory is because he was the eyewitness to what happened at the Tower of Joy so he can be a person who can say actually you know what I was there and that baby child was taken by Ned and then they came up with this plan that Ned would say it was his baby, da 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 da, and that's how that is going to happen. So I think in the books, Howland Reed is going to have a much bigger part to play and people will believe him because he is he's a noble lord and an eyewitness. On the show, they are largely, I think, using Bran as the shortcut to that because they've not introduced Helen Reed as a character. I'm st I still love them too, but I, it's, they've left it so late now that I, I, I fear they probably won't. But uh, whether people will believe him, I think that he's also got the evidence from Sam about there being a wedding, <coughs> pardon me, a wedding uh, between Rhaegar and Lyanna. And so I think that when you sort of add these things together, they will just take it as a shortcut that people will believe them. It won't be a matter of, yeah, well, who should we believe these people or not? Sam is in, incredibly trustworthy, and I think that people will go with his understanding of what was going on as well as 
brands who has shown that he has got magical powers of knowing stuff about people as well. Let's not forget that most people will have seen his ability to read people's innermost thoughts and histories and understanding. But 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 what what do you think, Vanessa? Do you think there's going to be any kind of hint of well, I'm not sure I believe you. Um, oh, yeah, I'm sure. Um, but I agree with you for the most part as as far as the books and the show go. Um, I do think Helen has a, a pretty good part to play in the books. Um, another theory that I, I kind of like is that there's something hidden in Leanna's tomb that alludes to his um, ancestor or parentage. Um, you know, I've seen Rhaegar's harp. I've seen some like a royal ring or dragon egg or something. Um, so who knows? I mean, a wedding cloak. It could be any number of things. But I do like that idea that there's something there, um, especially because John keeps um, being drawn into the crypts in this dream, like recurring dream that he has. He's always drawn down there, and he's always got this feeling that he doesn't belong and he's not a Stark. And he, I feel like you know, it's it's ultimately going to end up him being at that tomb and finding it out there somehow. So I do like that idea. Um, but yeah, in the show, um, I think Bran will definitely be questioned. But, you know, if he can, if you can, if he can go up to you and say, hey, I remember when this happened, and, like tell you your whole life story because he's seen it all. I mean, it'd be kind of hard not to believe someone that can tell you, you know, everything you've ever done in your life um, would be pretty creepy, too, as well. But um, another thing that might be interesting is if um, he develops enough powers that he could like project his vision into someone else's head. I think that would be really cool. Don't know if they'll go there, but it would be a neat way to kind of show someone the proof rather than just telling them. But who knows? Yeah, I think that's uh, that probably wouldn't go any further to convince people. They're just thinking somebody has put a vision into their mind, but I could certainly see that that is a way on the show they could show how people are being visually, yeah. by something exactly visually. They're, they 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 like this will show you what happened rather than yeah. as all good stories storytellers do will show you what happened rather than just tell you what happened mm -hmm. so uh i hope that one answers that one for you um the why don't we wrap it up there i think we've we've roughly reached a, a conclusion on this one i think that and and feel free vanessa to interrupt me if i've misinterpreted where we're at i think we've agreed that Daenerys can have children. I think we've agreed that the story arcs seem to imply that her and John both are in a place where having a child would actually make sense for them. They both think about being parents quite a lot. It would make sense that there's time for Daenerys to, uh, to have a child if they want to, or at least to learn that she's pregnant. I think that there's a chance that one or both of the parents, John and Danny, will not survive. Uh, personally, I suspect that both of them won't survive. But that's again, that's a, a whole other issue. But so don't don't pick up on that too much. Uh, but the child, if the child survives, could well be. Um, yes, everybody recognizes as a as a ruler, but also somebody that people would care about because they are the child of these people who led the the fight for freedom for humanity. So it's possible that the child dies, but if they live, then uh, I have a sneaky suspicion that they would probably give that child to some people like Sansa and Tyrion to look after. Is there anything that you would want to add to that sort of overall thought? Um, no, I, I think I've come to pretty much the same conclusion uh, broadly that you have. Uh, I agree with just about everything you've said there. So uh, it remains to be seen. Uh, we'll probably end up being completely shocked <laughs> and surprised by what actually happens. But, um, you know, that's it's all we got to go on for the moment. So I, I, I think that we're kind of on the same track here. Excellent. I love it when people say I agree with everything you said there. That's uh, that's uh, a, a lovely warm glow. Um, uh, okay, guys, we're going to wrap this one up up here. Um, for uh, well, let's go to so the Vanessa. Is uh, do you want to remind people where they can find you uh, if they're looking for you out there on the internet? So yeah, um, you come uh, read my articles over at watchersonthewall.com or westworldwatchers.com. Uh, like I said, the season two is over now, but hopefully, you know, we'll still be able to 
get trickles of news here and there. They were nominated for 21 Emmys actually. So um, that's coming up in September. So hopefully they'll get some wins there. I will definitely be reporting on that. Um, yeah, and I, I continue to do all different kinds of art. I do fan art for Westworld, um, Game of Thrones, Song of Ice and Fire and other things. So um, definitely follow me on Twitter at VK Cole Artist. Excellent. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, you're already on my channel, so you don't need to search for that. I'm on all the normal places like Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. But uh, right now, I'm trying to send people to my new channel just to go and check it out. It's called The Well Told Tale. There's a link down there in the description. It's me reading audiobooks, and that's all it is. It's just it's, it's, I'm trying to keep it as pure as possible. We're going to we're can't, I've started working on the uh, or going through the War of the Worlds. Then we're going to get onto Frankenstein, and then we're going to get onto some other amazing things. So please do go and check that one out. Uh, if you're at all interested in supporting this channel uh, in getting access to uh, some exclusive uh, audio content that I do for my patrons, please do check out my Patreon page. That's patreon.com slash indeepgeek. Again, there's a link down below. Uh, but that's it for this time. Uh, I will see you this time next week for another live stream. Uh, but I'd just like to thank everybody, particularly for the super chats, but also for the uh, great questions that we had out there in the chat. Uh, thank you, guys, and I will see you again next week. Take care. Bye. Bye, guys.